it's been a challenging several days for many many of our of our um our prayer community because they have been going through um a period of time without power um there's a great a great portion of our prayer community that's in Georgia and um, I had the opportunity of speaking with a couple of them uh, just yesterday and learned that they may not see power until around later this week. And that's that's hard. That is quite challenging. And I bring that up because um, I want us to be mindful of those who labor among us, those who, who pray alongside us. And um, I want you to keep them in prayer. Please do so. As they are navigating through this week, they're in good spirits, but nevertheless, it's a challenge. Um, and we thank the Lord for for them having some type of backup um, to navigate through this. But nevertheless, we want to make sure that we keep them lifted in prayer. All right. And so when you think about those that are in Georgia, um, you think about uh, Brother Terry, Sister Connie uh, Johnson, as well as Sister Bonnie White. Um, Sister Marcy Cove, I think uh, yeah, Sister Marcy's here with us this morning. Um, Sister Tawana Brooks, I believe she's in uh, Fitzgerald, if I'm correct. Um, the Hendersons, um, specifically um, Brother Curtis and Sister Takara, um, the Jenkins uh, family. Um, we could just go; the list goes on. And but I, I'm asking you all to keep them, keep them in your hearts. Um, in your minds and your thoughts and your prayers, please. All right. And so let's go ahead and um and get into our devotional for this morning. Uh, we've been in a theme for the last for the last week. We started it last week and we're continuing it this week, titled The Prayer for Heirs. And these are keys for praying like a king's kid. Keys for praying like a king's kid. In other words, it's important for you to know that you are the child of a king. You're the offspring of a king. And it's important to know how to pray like such, uh, to think like such, to live life as a king's kid. And so um, we've been walking through um, the various ways to pray like a king's kid. And uh, the most important thing I'll start off with this week is just to remind us that Jesus makes a great distinction of who to not pray like, and we really focused on that last week. And that is, uh, he said, therefore do not be like them. Who's them? Uh, that would be the heathen as well as the hypocrite. Uh, don't be like the ones as a hypocrite who only prays to be seen. And don't be like the heathen who keeps repeating themselves, thinking that their repetitions are the reason why God hears them. No. Um, both of those are praying, or you would call that the spirit of the orphan, uh, they don't realize that they are the sons and daughters of God. And so um, they're either going out just to be seen and satisfied with that alone, or um, they don't realize the connection that they have, the heathen, um, who, who who keeps repeating without the faith to believe that the Father heard them the first time. All right. And so today I want you to um, I want you to go a little further in the text, and we're going to get more um Get a, get a little deeper in understanding what it looks like to pray as a king's kid, um, as an heir. The scripture, again, is Matthew chapter 6. We started looking at verse 8. Let's read it through to verse 10. It says, Therefore do not be like them, the hypocrite or the heathen. He said, For your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And as you can see, the emphasis for this morning is your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This morning, uh, the focus or the key that I'm giving you for praying like a king's kid is to perform his purpose. As a king's kid, it is our responsibility to perform the purposes of the king. That word will means purpose. We've already established your kingdom come means that we want to see the kingdom of God established here on earth 
That means growing and flourishing successfully. We want to see that. But he also goes on and says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so in order for us to understand how God's will is done on earth, we have to look to heaven to see how his will is done there. And by the way, if I didn't make myself clear, um, God's will is God's purpose. Okay. So God's will is God's purpose. Write that down. Put that in the comment section. God's will is God's purpose. Okay. So I want to take us to a scripture that we looked at uh, probably about a month ago. Um, Psalm 103 verse 20. Let's go to that because it actually helps us to see how the will of God is done in heaven. So the scripture says, bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do, who do his word, heeding to the voice of his word. Well, how do we in, how do we know uh, the the will of God? Well, through the word of God. And so we find that in heaven, the ones who are doing the will of God are the ones who are the angels. The will of God or the purpose of God is fulfilled in heaven by the angels. They carry out all of the desires of God. That's their responsibility. Now that's in heaven. Well, what about here on earth? He said, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, well, Jesus gives us this answer, and let's go to John chapter 4, verse 34. Look at what Jesus says. The scripture says, um, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. So what we discover is Jesus clearly states that the will of God is fulfilled by me. He's saying, this is my, this is my food. This is what sustains me. This is what gives me sustenance is to do the will of the Father, to do the will of the one who sent me. The angels were responsible for doing God's will up in heaven. Here it is. Now we find Jesus is responsible for doing the will of God here on earth. And who are we? We are the church of whom Jesus, he is the head of the church, which means that we are the body of Jesus. We are we are the body of Christ, which means that it is our responsibility to make sure that the will of God is carried out here on earth as it is in heaven. So really what happens is, Elder, Elder Moore, when we pray uh, your kingdom come, but more specifically, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, what we're praying is, Lord, enable us and lead us Give us strategy for carrying out your purposes here on earth. Can you see that? Yeah. Every time we pray this, Sister Vivian, I'm saying, Lord, give me the power to perform your purpose. This means that I am, I am submitting my life as a living sacrifice to carry out the purposes of God in the earth. If you've ever wondered, why am I here? I would encourage you to pray the prayer with this understanding. Your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. There are some of us who we don't understand what our purpose is, um, why we were created, uh, why it is that we are here, why we've been planted in this place or that city. Uh, may not understand it may not have understanding why. So instead of just kind of rummaging through life or just kind of lollygagging, um, what I would, or, or being casual, what I would encourage you to do is to pray this prayer. And when you pray it, know that you have purpose and your purpose is to perform the purpose of God. And I believe that the Lord will, he will, he will inspire you. He will guide you. He will lead you empower you to perform his purpose in the earth. Can you see that? 
This morning, I want to pray with this mindset, knowing that it's the angels who carry out God's will in heaven, but it's the church that carries out his will on earth. God desires that we would, would, would perform his purpose. Ah, I had one more note for you, and it's important that I share this before we pray. This is a difference between an heir and a beneficiary. A beneficiary just receives money or things, but an heir receives responsibility. And you as a child of God, you don't, you don't just receive money, you don't just receive things, but what you've received is the responsibility that comes from the king. So you don't just have property, what you have is purpose. And it is your responsibility as an heir of God, co-heirs with Jesus Christ, that is, to perform his purpose. Let's pray. Father, we honor you and we are so grateful for this day that you've made. Regardless of the conditions, regardless of what we're facing, we make the decision to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, I thank you for your word because I believe that in such a prayer that seems so simple, Father, it brings about great transformation. I thank you that your, your word that came through your son is transforming our paradigm, our, shifting our minds and helping us to see that we have purpose. So Lord, I ask you to forgive us for every time that we committed our lives to things that were beneath, beneath our purpose, that were beneath our design, that were, that were beneath the reason that you placed us here. Father, forgive us for the times that we were distracted. Father, forgive us for the times that we, that we wasted. Lord, this morning, we bring our attention to you because we recognize as heirs of the kingdom of God, as children of the king, that it is our responsibility to perform your purpose. So Lord, that means that I will yield to you. We yield our lives to the glory of God and we say, have your way. Father, as we say, your kingdom come and your will be done. What we anticipate is that, Lord, that you would give us strategy. What we anticipate is that, Lord, you would give us direction. What we anticipate is that, Father, you would empower us for the purposes of God. Because the only way that your purpose, hallelujah, glory to your name, the angels fulfill your purpose in heaven, but the church fulfills your purpose on earth. So, Lord, we say, have your way and give us the grace, the achieving power to fulfill your work here on earth as it is in heaven. And so, Lord, I thank you for my brother. I thank you for my sister. I thank you that you are giving them clarity on their purpose. I thank you for that student that's receiving clarity in their purpose. That, Father, We've been planted to fulfill your purpose. And I'm grateful that we will have direction as the body of Christ as we move forward. And as we close out this prayer, God, I just want to lift up uh, those who are part of our community, who were in the path of the storm, who experienced uh, a loss of power. Father, we pray for them. And God, we lift them up and we say, Lord, Father, we pray that you would grant them grace and mercy in this hour. Father, that you would comfort them and give them strength as they navigate through these days to come. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for preserving their lives. The property might have been damaged, but God, they're still here. And Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We resolve this prayer by praying as your son taught us, and we say in its entirety, our Father who is in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And we ask you to give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And all of God's children say, Amen. Well, God bless you. My name is Enrique Brooks. I am honored to be the senior pastor of Thrive Church and host of the Prayer 365 podcast. We're on a mission to transform lives through the lifestyle of prayer. I encourage you to take a few moments and reflect on today's devotional, knowing that as an heir, you don't just receive money, you don't just receive things, but what you receive is purpose. You have responsibility to carry out the purpose of your father. I love you. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. Take care.